Okay, so so I guess I'll start with, um, do you remember how you worded the the rap question to me? In hip hop or rappers, is their careers not going to be as sustainable as long term if they don't don't do the storytelling method of rapping? Okay, and and when you say storytelling rapping, we know what that is. Do you think of it like Motown? Like it is? Are you thinking like? They have, uh, I mean, like literally what you see in the movie Eight Mile with Eminem, where he sits down with a pad of paper and a pen and he like sits there and he like writes out his rhymes and like uh, um, has a whole story that he's working on in his mind kind of thing. Yeah, I think it's a story, to, a story arc. I think I think NWA is probably a better example because they would tell stories about, um, you know, getting in kind of some kind of attention confrontation from somebody and then overcoming it. You know, they, they, some of those would even go through where they're selling drugs, avoiding police officers on the run, you know. Right. Just a, I guess it's called a baby story arc. Okay. The first part of that question sounds to me like, is rap telling less stories than it used to be? Um, how would you, would you go that? about finding that out? <laughs> I wish you just said that. Well, I think we could just look up the lyrics as a research person. This is your job, by the way. <laughs> I'm not sure what mine is yet. Now, to answer um, the question, ideally we would read the lyrics of every rap song ever written and give it a score of S for story or a T for theme only. Then we compare the years and that would tell us, you know, how much rap has become less about storytelling, starting all the way back to, you know, Rapper's Delight with Sugar Hill Gang. But we can't, unfortunately. It would take uh, teams of researchers and and grants from colleges to manage that or it would it would take you know training an ai to do it i mean this is crazy but are you capable of like reading all rap lyrics ever written and analyzing whether or not they're thematic or narrative while i can't access or analyze every rap lyric ever written i can assist with analyzing the top rated rap songs based on available lyrics from certain databases so if i had the official sales numbers billboard numbers and chart data and then combine those with streaming service information. You could tell me which were the top hits per year, and then you could tell me if they told a story. Provide me the charts, and I will provide you the data. So that's what we did. We gave ChatGPT the official charts company data for the rap songs from 1994 to 2024. And how did it score my beloved 90s rap? Gangsta's Paradise, 1995, got an S for story. It follows a single character with a single problem, which evolves as the rap continues. It starts as I walk through the Valley of Shadow of Death. See, it's following one person. And then it continues. I'm 23. Will I ever live to see 24? And ends with, that's why I know my life is out of luck. One person, one story, big conclusion. But then ChatGPT gives 2014's mega hit, Fancy, by Iggy Azalea, a T for thematic only. You should want a bad bitch like this. Drop it low and pick it up like this. Cup of Ace, cup of Goose, cup of Chris. High heels, something worth half a ticket on my wrist. I know I'm I'm not very good at rapping, but ChatGPT doesn't think this tells a story. And if you go through the lyrics, it's mostly just ideas that fit together and an extraordinarily catchy tune. But that's just two examples. What about the overall trend? Okay, next is 1992, Jump Around by House of Pain. That was a big one. I score it a T for thematic. Regulate by Warren G and Nate Dogg. Story. I'll Be Missing You by Puff Daddy. Story. Hard Knock Life by Jay-Z. Thematic with narrative elements. So, why does this all matter? Well, after a couple hours of confirming ChatGPT's lyric analysis... It became pretty clear that a silly show that just asks one idle question, does rap tell less stories than it used to? That may not have an impact on our lives. But if we ask a much bigger question, like, why is all music going away from storytelling? And why are attention spans changing as listeners? Why have we optimized for songs that are more about catchiness and tune and so much less about the lyrics. 
why are parts of the industry changing so drastically to where writing actually gets you paid less? The next two episodes really just get at the heart and soul of music, and why music itself is losing heart and soul, and rap is just the canary in the coal mine. See, all music is drifting toward this trend because one giant online music platform has uncovered the secret to selling you subscriptions to listen to old songs. Songs you probably already own the records to, leaving new artists to just phone it in or risk being pushed out of the industry. We're going to uncover the secrets of why music really is changing, and it's not just old people complaining that new music is bad, like they always have. But to do this, we're going to follow a few myths that will help guide us through the twists and turns of the industry. Like myth one, where are all the new bands? We constantly hear that there isn't any good new music. But is that true? Is there an actual metric to show that bands are in fact shrinking and that there are less bands emerging? Myth two, music has become democratized, meaning... Anybody can go online and listen to anybody they want, so everyone should have an equal chance to win the battle of who becomes a new band and who becomes a good rapper. But is that actually true? Myth three. Where does that leave hip-hop? Well, hip-hop surpassed rock and roll for a while for America's preferred music. But why is it dipping back down? And why is it that Adam Levine of Maroon 5 says that there is no music scene, and if there is, he hasn't been invited. We're going to get to our myths. But first, Todd and I have to confirm that we are, in fact, two old men talking about music we used to love and why everything sounds so damn different now. Okay, so, I, I while breaking down the data... First off, uh, were you surprised by this answer when when I when I took your question, has rap become less about storytelling? I went into the cave and then I came back with with this process. Did the results surprise you, or was it just like you shrugging your shoulders at me and being like, "Well, yeah, obviously." I knew something was up because we study storytelling so much, right? And uh, I've been singing and just listening to a lot more music than I ever. I didn't think it was possible to listen to more music than I used to. Cause I listen to it all day. Now I listen to it in my dreams and I kind of knew that. It made me think of the Motown episode we did. Like, like, which, which was a great word. Smokey Robinson before he was Smokey Robinson, before he was famous, before he just had so many ideas and love stories and broken heart stories. And he had them in a this huge binder. And, um, and then Bordy, Barry Gordy, um, took them from him, so let's put some structure to these stories and 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 make some real music. Right, that's that's what I think of when when you first asked me this. I said, well, well, obviously rap is about storytelling still, like like music is about storytelling, and I thought ex that's the moment I thought of um, with Motown is the two of those meeting and and taking that binder of stories and being like, no, you just gotta you, you gotta edit these stories and and trim them down and make them make sense and. There's a moment in the, in the documentary between those two where I think it was Barry Gordy says, you know, how many how many ways can you say my girl left me and I'm sad about it <laughs> and I want her back. And, and and he's like, it turns out thousands of ways and nobody will ever get tired of it. Well, I just saw this thing with with Eric Clapton and, and he was just he was doing the British thing of tearing down at people, just being very uh, tough critic <laughs> about yeah. other musicians and. But the point of his thing was, he says, if music doesn't make you feel anything, it's not an art. If it yeah. doesn't give you any kind of emotion. And then I immediately from this, some of the rap music, that because I've loved rap music my whole life. I started listening to it actually when it came out. You know, when it was not, it was a new genre. And I was teased about it because it was, <laughs> it was different, right? You're bopping a but, Sugar Hill Gang and Rapper's Delight. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and, and it was storytelling at its best, right? It's poetry and storytelling. And um, and then I think of that about heavy metal. I think if I can't understand the words and it's not spaced out and it doesn't make me feel anything, is that really music? Right. Actually, that is a good point. Like, OK, so that is that is that brings me to a, a very interesting question. 
which genres have been about storytelling because because somebody listening to this episode might be like well who cares if rap isn't about story anymore but all good music is about story and i'll i'll stand and die by that because uh like led zeppelin like like led zeppelin is is a great example of metal where they're like it sounds like just wall of noise if you're not into to you know rock but then you listen to it and, and a lot of their songs are about Lord of the Rings. Like literally like I come, we come from the land of ice, ice and snow. Like they are singing and they have admitted to this. They sing about Lord of the Rings and like parts of the stories from the Lord of the Rings trilogy. So like, <laughs> so they can't say it's not a story, right? Right. Yeah. So like, like no, most, most musical genres are deeply about storytelling or they touch on it or they tell us a full story in the length of a song. Um, my don't, they, don't aren't those the two worst parts and best parts of your life the best part of your life and and what everyone can can relate to is falling in love and being in love and then and then <sighs> of course the worst is the opposite <laughs> when you get left and that's what great <laughs> country songs are about <laughs> yeah and what great pop music is about too right and if you're into 90s rock uh the stories are about uh, addictions <laughs> so i i mean that's that's half of red hot chili pepper songs um but there there was there was a, a moment i had where i was doing this and i was deep into the data like i was i was looking at here are the the couple hundred songs from this billboard list here are the ones that are they're distinctly about narrative i'm i'm double checking what the ai is giving me which is it's breaking down the narrative of each lyric like it's saying whether it's a single narrative it follows or double or, or no narrative at all theme only and i'm talking about this like I, I ramble about our episodes while i'm studying them and i probably sound totally crazy like that that picture of a um the guy from it's always sunny where it's like i've got red string on a, a, a chalkboards <laughs> and billboards and like like i've got pins behind me and i'm 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 you know geeked out um i was talking about this stuff and, and my future father-in-law I'm getting married in a couple of months and, and he is very, he's Texas. Like, like just imagine a Texan man. That's it. He's been in construction his whole life. Uh, um, he's very sort of like a, a show me kind of person. And I'm talking about the data and I'm like, it's, it's less about storytelling these days. And, 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 and he turns to me and he's like, what about country? <laughs> he was he was very concerned. <laughs> like he was like, this could end his world. And, and I was like, I was like, I'll do the same. I'll do the same study. Why not? Like, I'll, you know, now that I have the structure and formula for it, I'll I'll put country songs, the last, you know, uh, the great hundred country songs, the the top performers through this same, you know, uh, process. And I came back to him the next day and I'm like, no, country actually has had the least shift away from storytelling there. Is that is that why, Joe, that's that country has taken over pop and the two are synonymous now? I really wonder that like like that because is pop something kind of kind of got got out away from that. Yeah. And, and that we still at our core. I think you were surprised by this because you asked me that question. I think you were. And I could tell by how excited you got when you got the answer. It seemed like it surprised you. Oh, 100 percent. I, I I honestly thought like, well, you know, there's always been poppy songs that just sound good, but they don't tell a story and they're kind of flash in the pan. There's always been like earworm, you know, hook into your brain songs where like you enjoy them, but they don't stick like they're they're not like you know, a horse with no name or something where it tells this deep story. Like I, I thought it was going to be no, nothing's changed, but technology, everything's changed. Technology has changed. Uh, um, the platform has changed. How we get music to people has changed. A and it was shocking to me how many types of music now don't tell stories anymore that, that they, they have gone away from storytelling in a way where it's like, you know, goodbye Fleetwood Mac and and welcome Iggy Azalea, who is just stringing together lyrics that don't actually say anything. Um, and that's I, I say that almost derisively because I am a storyteller, but it I don't mean it in, in the strictest sense of like I'm not I'm not shaking my nose or, or my finger at them. I I'm more I'm like well that's not a genre for me. Like like it's it's you can enjoy music that makes you tap your toe and and dance, but you don't necessarily have to just be on board for the story. That's just me. Um, and apparently that's just you. I mean, you, you asked this question to start with. Well, no, because I was struggling to try to keep, uh, you know, keep up with 
<laughs> this is when my dad is a musician and uh, I don't know what level, you know, a studio level musician. He played instruments all his life. Um, he's tr had been in bands and he just likes weird music. And I remember as a kid trying to connect with him and trying to listen to that music. I just didn't like it. And so I always felt that I like I wasn't deep enough. You know, it's like me going to an art museum. I wouldn't know what I was looking at, you know, <laughs> and I thought if I just keep going to the art museum and keep listening to this terrible music that I'd somehow figure it out. And then finally I got to the mature ages. I'm just going to like music that everybody else fucking likes, you know, <laughs> forget it, <laughs> you know, because I just gave up because I just didn't think it was. And then I'm thinking, well, there must be a reason that that more people like this than this, you know? Yeah. I, I very much feel the same way. Like there are genres where I kind of can't stand some of the music and, and there's such a huge following. I assume there's something to it. Like there, there's something I'm missing and then I'll listen to it enough, analyze it enough and I'll say, Oh no, I don't, I'm not missing anything. It's just not for me. And, and I can respect people who like that music, but it's not mine. Um, and, and a lot of that honestly is, is the music that doesn't tell stories. Like I, I find that, I can enjoy a beat, but I, I want I want something to, to remember. Like I, I, I want something interesting and an interesting turn of phrase. And um, I'm, I'm trying to think of a good example. There's a Pearl Jam song that's like, uh, I think it's Last Kiss or something like that. Heartbreaking song. And I'm like, you'll that will stick with me. Whereas like a, a nonsensical beat or, 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 you know, rhythm centric song that doesn't say anything it's not going to stick with me i'll just i'll just enjoy it it's 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 uh, um what they say on radio lab it's neurological cheesecake like it doesn't do anything for you it just it just you enjoy it briefly and then you kind of forget it um why do you think we are trending toward that by the way Trend, trending towards well <laughs> that's going to be revealed later do you know what punching in is Okay, um, I do not. <laughs> well, okay, I, I, let me put it a different way. I did not before we started working on this episode, and I, I still don't completely understand why that is being favored right now. Okay, this has been a, this is something that happened a long time, and it is a long time ago, and it is a huge deal, and everyone needs to know about it. And I can't believe I didn't know about it until you sent me my homework. But this is how songs are writing, and it started about twenty years ago. And the rapper who started it was Jay-Z. Now, why this is interesting to me, for years he was saying he doesn't write songs, that he is just this messiah of rap who things just pop in his head. And I always discarded that. I always thought, well, I don't think that's true. I think he just says that like, and, and us as humans want to believe people are just blessed and gifted, right? We want to believe that for them it just comes easy to the fact that they don't even have to practice. And I thought, well, that's the wrong message to be sending. You know, and Jay-Z would always say that. And then all the people around him would say, yeah, he just comes in the studio, but this is what he does. Do you imagine like eight mile Eminem sitting down with a pad and paper in that white trash trailer house and writing out a rhyme and then finding some music to go with it? Oh, I, I literally that scene is what I imagine when I think of rappers writing lyrics that are or, or I think of the Beatles locking themselves into an apartment somewhere and, and, and yeah. writing out everything sitting on this floor and like spreading it out like like you were talking about yourself, that mad detective with, you know, lyrics and notes on the wall. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's that's how they used to do it. What they did was they take pen and paper and they would write out the whole song. Right. And then they would go find some music and put it behind. But that was a long coat. That's when they were doing it called when they were just tape recording things. So once the tape recording started, it didn't stop till the song was done. Until 20 years ago, Jay-Z will just say a line and he'll press record. He'll say a line that rhymes in his head with no, no homework, no premise. Um, Sometimes they'll think of, oh, I want to talk about this, but usually they don't. Just a rhyme, and then they'll stop it. And then they'll think another th rhyme, and then he'll record, and then they'll stop it. And so it's a start-stop. Before, it was this five-minute thing that you had to struggle through. Kind of like when we write a speech, right? We okay. struggle through it. Even if it sucks, we kind of 
we sand out that b- bad area later and we listen to it again. So this is sentence by sentence. So they don't always go together because, of course, they're, you know, our ADHD thoughts of here, there. Right. And they've got the music playing in their head or are they just doing this to open air? Like, like, are they acapella or, or is this they're listening to their own song and they are they are. Spinning. Some will do. Some will do it to a beat. Some just say it into a microphone. They just da da da. Most of the ones I were seeing, where they were just saying it without any music. And then they add a track in later. I I watched part of the video. Uh, um, I've watched a couple of videos, seeing them do it, just because I wanted to have a visual when we talk about this, and and. So it, they'll, they'll repeat a line three or four times, kind of like we used to do with speeches where like, what's the best way to say this sentence? And then they hit a button and it like locks it. Like, it, right. It, it, okay. And they push it all together. So then they, so they don't know the whole song until they won't know the whole song until they get to practice it later. They could have a recording to have it out on Spotify and not know the song. Like they did it, they did it once though, and you don't know a song or a speech or a story from just reading it or saying it once, right? Right. And they try; they they really work on the inflections. Or they work a lot on how. Do you notice that how they say it? They're working on kind of tweaking their voice and saying it with a strong accent, <laughs> more than the actual content itself. Okay, so they're they're saying it to match the beat they're not saying it to say something important like it is what i'm picking up from this instead of instead of motown where they would come in with a story like barry gordy and Smokey robinson would come in with a story written mm-hmm. down this is we have the audio music and we're just gonna like throw up on the uh, like into, into we'll just say what comes to our mind while we're listening and then that seems like cheating like does that seem like cheating to you It doesn't seem like it would be as good uh, end product to me. It seems too easy. And it seems, and that, that the cheating part, yes. And and a lot of the rappers that are interviewed were laughing about that said they would never even attempt to write a song all the way out. (laughs) Like that's so old fashioned and they couldn't do it even if they wanted to, which to me was like a sign of weakness, like showing, you know what I mean? (laughs) I mean, I'm thinking, I can't believe you'd say that out loud because it is cheating. <laughs> I think that's like a football player that it just says that you, they don't learn to throw the ball. Like they're like, no, I don't need to. Right. Learn that. Or they yeah. only want to, they only want the play to last for one second. They don't want it to last the whole 12 seconds where they get tackled. They just, the first two seconds. <laughs> right. Yeah. It seems very uncreative to me. It seems like they've taken the um, technology and figured out how to do the least amount of work the average for recording time to record a song the old way you could record a, a song a day with this um stop go stop go um pl- punching in method joe you can do five to seven songs a night yeah so it's so it's mass it's you know it's it's a lot more content a lot faster in in a very strange way this almost reminds me of how photography has changed where you used to have photographers that's, who were... That's a good parallel right there. Yeah, you, you used to have, like, physical tape and, and cellulose and, like, camera, like, like a mechanical camera, and you had 30 shots or, or 32 or whatever it was, and, like, you had to be very specific about what you're shooting. You had to get down on, like, your knees or lay on your back or, or like, you're in, you're in Times Square and you're, like, you're, you're aiming for the, the best shot, like a sniper, like you are positioning yourself. Right. For hours, you, for, yeah, hours, for, for hours, for hours, yeah. yeah. Or, you're, or you're waiting out in nature, and you're like literally like a hunter, except you're trying to get a shot of like uh, a, a wild Arctic fox or something. Versus technology put out digital cameras, which can can record ten thousand pictures in one drive, and so you don't have to do any of that. You just take ten thousand pictures over the course of an hour, and then you just select the best ones. Like you don't have to. There, there's almost none of that like you you don't have to prepare as much or do anything you have everybody carrying around their phone and everybody just like is a photographer because they can take so many pictures and and then everyone's saying they're a photographer right it's just like everyone's saying they're a rapper when everyone i was gonna if we had more time for this show i was gonna see if we could do a song (laughs) 
<laughs> I think we could. I think anybody could with you the right inflections in your voice. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That would be but so does- interesting. I want to go to a studio and try that someday. Just like, just like, as a as a double date, like we take our 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 gals out and we like humiliate ourselves by trying to punch in a rap song. <laughs> <laughs> well, and the photography thing is dead on because then there was the development of it, and then you kind of see what you got at the end, which is very similar to the pen and paper. Um, go through the whole thing, and then you see what you got. But now, what's more common is let's just take a hundred pictures, and there'll be one or two good ones in there. And yeah. they're digital, and and so why even put the effort in? I, I, I know that this is a very recent thing, because I've seen so many writer rappers do well, and, and it seems like the youngest people are doing this. We're gonna we're gonna link to a video. I think the best one so far that we found is there's a YouTube video that was put up by the New York Times, and it is about exactly this. It's like a five minute video, and it's all about punching in, and and it's it's shocking to watch because it is so like oh oh it's all these young guys like <laughs> and and the older people are like pen and papering it um what do you think we're losing with this like like and by the way we're using rap as an example but but this touches every part of the industry like there is such cross pollinization this is this is everywhere i think we're going to lose um the, the, i think the musicians are going to lose out they're going to monetize faster so they're going to be like lottery winners, but there's going to be less of, um, the Jay- you know, the Little Waynes, the Jay Zs, the M and Ms. Their their careers are going to be shorter, and they're they're not going to be able to follow their style, you know, or like Flow Rider or something, um, because they're not going to really have a style. The, to me, it seems more like it's just like commercials on TV, and you're not going to follow commercials on TV, right? Right. So yeah. like which 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 also even do storytelling like with the insurance ones, <laughs> they even tell stories too. The ones that last, right? Can I uh, um to to paraphrase what you just said? Are we talking about like the ubiquity of it that that the actual writer storytellers in music are going to be competing against a uh, hundred people who are punching in for every one of them? <laughs> Right, and and what what I think it does for the industry is it just it just waters it down. It reminds me a lot of um, what Amazon did with publishing books. Yeah. They made it so low cost that it's so flooded with with stuff. I mean, you know what that's done to to writing. Is yeah. it safe to say it's kind of it's certainly changed it. I, ruining might be the right word too. I don't I don't know. <laughs> you know, <laughs> there was there was a one two punch in the writing industry, which is. It, it it democratized writing, which is good. It, um, it, it made it to where uh, anybody could publish because it was so cheap. But what you got is you got a flood of people who were very bad writers trying to capitalize on how cheap it was to publish and trying to trick people into buying their book. For for every three people who were just not great writers, but they really meant it and they were hopeful and they were trying their best and they really wanted something out there those people probably deserve to get a couple of sales like like they they're not going to be mega hits they they obviously weren't because like major publishers weren't picking them up but for every three of them there's 10 uh, um ai driven or, or or like um unscrupulous uh, uh people who are just putting out literal garbage packaged with a decent book cover and they're 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 trying to make it sparkly or sexy or or or, or title it right or, or trick you honestly it, uh, really trick into buying a book that is just nothing like it, it's just it, it is it is a, a shredded newspapers of words on the inside yeah and some of some it's, it's like a leaflet you know there's no content and the story doesn't make sense it hasn't been edited it has no <laughs> yeah <laughs> has no tension and I, I feel like the same thing has happened with music is I, I i look at some of the stuff that comes up and i'm like there's no love that went into this that they, they were some of these people punching it in, some of the rappers that are doing this, and some of the musicians, like not just rappers, some of the musicians and other genres doing this, I can tell they mean it. Like like they are punching it in, but they're using that as a tool. They're really trying to be creative. Uh, they deserve a couple listens. But there are some of them that are recording so much so fast that they can't possibly mean it. It can't possibly mean something to them if they are putting out you know 90 songs in a, in a, in a month or two. Well, that, and that, see, that's an interesting point you just made there. Is that true? Do or is, and we'll talk about this later when we talk about the Spotify CEO. Be, 
is it better because the book took seven years or yeah. is that is there some happy medium i guess right and i know what you're saying if it took seven minutes then yeah you're right how good could it be but if they did two books in their whole lifetime or <laughs> or and and we, there's been some great musicians who have who struggled with addiction and stuff and it, it has kept them from actually writing and recording and we've missed out on on the, their best years you know right. as have they and I, I do want to say for anybody listening to this and is like, this doesn't apply to me, it it, it applies to everybody in such an amazing degree. And, and the reason why is because um, this method of punching in, this this style, the platforms that are promoting people to, to, to rapidly produce music, it's affecting everybody huge. Like 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 it it is it is touching every music genre and it's changing everybody's musical tastes and it's it's affecting musical sales. Um Adam Levine of Maroon 5 uh, said that rock is dead and there isn't any scene for it anymore. And if there is, he hasn't been invited. <laughs> and it's, it's, um, you said something uh, um, before Todd, where you were like, when I first brought this, this data back to you, you were like, well, there was radio before. Like, like how did you separate the good and the bad music? Well, you had a gatekeeper, you had somebody on the radio who would mm. play your music everybody would hear your song three times and then judge after that, whether or not you're good. Right. They would. And then it would, it would go out. Yeah. They would, but it was controlled by the industry. Right. Cause they would play the same 20 songs. Right. And then they, they would try not to go into too many new artists because they kind of had, they were afraid of losing listeners. Right. Kind of like, like published books. They know with Joe Anthony's new book, they're going to sell so many copies. So they're not going to take a chance on a new guy when they know that, they might not be the next whatever, but at least they can, at least they're guaranteed this much with, with this person, you know? Right. Um, before we get too far away from the writing section, cause I, I want to, I want to, <laughs> I'm, I'm already leading us astray into the industry part of it, but I just want to point out that why does it matter that young rappers don't write anything anymore? It's because this is a sign of the technology, not of the genre. This is a sign that, all music is going down this road very quickly. Um, but, but before we get into why the industry is is rewarding them for doing this kind of hack, um, do you want to talk about, uh, can we talk about Kendrick Lamar? Yes, the GOAT, the genius. Kendrick Lamar has won a, Pul a Pulitzer. Pulitzer? A Pulitzer, <laughs> a yeah. A Pulitzer for writing. You know, you know what the Pulitzer is, right, Joe, for writing? It, yes. Um, the Pulitzer is almost always given to classic writers, poets, journalists, things like that. Um, it, it's, well, they, yeah, go ahead. It was, he was an actual guy. And then he, he set it up this fund for, for this reward to be given out. And then it's gone. It, it's recognized as, I mean, how do you recognize that? That that's the, the, the Grammy of writing or I mean, what do you call it? <laughs> that's that's a pretty good actually that's pretty accurate it's uh um what it is labeled as is it's it's an achievement award for journalism art and letters um and it was established in like the 1920s 1917 um but what what it is is it's it's basically like if you are a writer uh and you are not aiming for like a sci-fi award like a hugo or a nebula uh if you're if you're on the real uh, uh non-fiction part of the spectrum and you're not newsprint then then a Pulitzer is amazing. That is that is a that is a mark of your life. Like that that if you win a Pulitzer, that's probably the highest prize you will ever win. Well, they started giving it for musicians in 1940, um, but they've always given the one for music to classical and jazz all these years. So no, none ever went to let's say the Beatles, or none, none ever went to Eric Clapton. I'm trying to think of some musicians that you would think who who have accomplished everything that were Bob so. Dylan. <laughs> yeah, well, Bob Dylan got recognized. He got a special citation, but he wasn't qualified for what what he won. Oh wow! Okay. But Kendrick Lamar got one for writing, and his story. And of course, he tells what kind of stories he's. He tells stories. He grew up in Compton. He's won 12 Grammys. Um, he's very sophisticated in his writing style. But he is a rapper, storyteller, old school. Yeah. And and that's strange to think that his rap albums can now be shelved alongside Harper Lee for To Kill a Mockingbird got a Pulitzer. So did Cormac McCarthy's The Road. 
So like, if you're looking at like how high of a uh, an achievement that is, how 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 talented your writing has to be, that's right. how talented. So he holds his style and his writing style and his creative story telling style to a higher standard. And he's seen as the you know the goat of his of rap. I mean, I don't think anyone could argue with that. Yeah, uh, his. I I I wish we could play music from like some of these genres we're talking about without immediately getting sued, <laughs> but but his the way his lyrics are written um, are metaphors and and um, double and triple meanings and, and like like as a a writer uh, um, I I do short story contests my my background is like um, I've gotten uh, international awards for short stories. I will read his lyrics and, and I've listened to his songs. Like I, I listened to humble before he got the Pulitzer and I was like, holy shit, how does he do that? Like, <laughs> like you can listen to it or, or read his lyrics and be like, that's crazy that somebody can fit that much information. That that's one of the signs of a good writer is recognizable information density. How many how dense it is and how, and how it's spaced out. So it's easy to listen to, right? It's not easy to do. I can't imagine that. Yeah. That you can convey that much information with so few words and still make it understandable. Cause if you're thinking dense, you're thinking like I'll crack open a physics book and I'll try to understand, right. you know, uh, um, um, yeah. Uh, micro particles or whatever. No, no, no. It's, it's, you can convey an emotion, a thought and a theme all at the same time. And you can make it understandable to most everybody. And he could do that. And it's, it's, it's a damn magic trick. Um, <laughs> But but hearing these young rappers who are just punching it in, I was going to say and, he couldn't do that with a punch in. He couldn't do that. No, never. It no, would be impossible. How do you feel about writers? Because you've won your awards that you have, that people who call themselves writers, does it make you kind of like your neck hurt, or do you at this point are you just callous to it? It's like Kendrick Lamar, someone else saying they're a rapper, and he must just like, uh, you know, yeah. <laughs> The, the the punching in version of writing is using AI. And there are a lot of writers who are trying their damnedest to um uh, uh there there was I, I was in on a meeting, like it was a an after hours kind of meeting for um Rides of the Future. And somebody asked about that. They're like, How many people are trying to use AI to win this contest? Um and one of the moderators was like, We see it every single uh, um quarter. They're like, We we see it in the contest. People are trying to like start a story and then they'll try to get an AI to, to punch up the rest or, or to, to make their stuff better or they'll have the AI tell a story, but they have the concept like so they feed the concept to them uh, and they're like, it just doesn't work like it, it's not there yet. But a lot of deep sci fi nerds and like nerds like me are like, I want that to happen eventually. But right now it's just robbing people of their jobs <laughs> instead of having an AI that can tell you a glorious, beautiful story based on your ideas. That would be amazing. I would want that because I would read it. I, I would love to go to a machine and be like, here's my, my dream that I had last night. Tell me a story about it or, or make something up instead of what but, you're getting is very mediocre product. Like to in me, this, streams. This, and it seems like, you know, we don't want to be these old men that are saying changes. And yeah, you do with your science fire. We do want an easy and a magic button. I think of someone who's worked in the trades like their whole life in Europe. I'm talking hundreds of years ago who would, their family was, you know, was carpenters, their carpenters, their grandkids will be carpenters. And then they built a church that, that took a generation to build and the stained yeah. glass and everything without that much effort and that much training. How can, how can the end product be as well as good? Right. It, it is um, what we are comparing right now is we are comparing uh, um, Ikea or Amazon to Etsy. It's it's you go to Amazon or you go to Walmart or you go to Ikea if you want cookie cutter uh, will be functional. Yes. It's okay. Like it's acceptable. It's cheap. It's going to it's going to wear down in about five years, but it, it'll do versus Etsy where you see the person who made it. They crafted it for you. It's it's the old word is artisanal, like like they built it for for this purpose. And you get to enjoy that. It was specifically made by somebody who is knitting it, building it, woodworking, it, whatever. And now it's yours and it's going to last forever or, or, or nearly. And, and music has that quality. <laughs> you, you listen to like some of the old music. You listen to like some stuff where they're writing it. 
and they are they are spending uh, you know they they went to a cottage somewhere like like uh, queen and they like they they sequestered themselves and they wrote this thing and they made this amazing music and it's a ballad and they come back and they show it to the world and it's amazing versus these cookie cutter punch in artists who are just trying to put out 12 songs in a month because that's what they're going to be incentivized to do money wise like they can't make it in the industry unless they are being the ikea of music <laughs> And with the punch in two, and you see the the weed smoke, and the, I always kind of romanticize like the seventies, eighties bands who were all drugged out of their minds, but they had to get sober for that two weeks to <laughs> to yeah. record their music. And I think the punch in is you could show up half drunk, half loaded, right, <laughs> and still get your seven songs out that night. <laughs> 